Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about one of the most if not the most bizarre planets we've ever discovered, the planet known as Kelt 9b. But we're also going to discuss the telescope itself because it is super exciting. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So obviously there are quite a lot of different exoplanets we've discovered around all kinds of different stars. But there's actually a type of a star that we haven't really looked around very much. These stars that are known as A-type and B-type subgiants are normally in a very specific region of magnitude that most telescopes do not look at. It's essentially a little bit too bright for telescopes like the currently operating TESS telescope or even Kepler telescope from a few years ago. And it's a little bit too dim for telescopes that normally look at so-called radial velocity that require a much easier to see and a much brighter star. So there's a kind of a gap in our observation of various stars and because of this some scientists decided to develop a very easy and somewhat efficient system known as KELT, which stands for Kilodegree Extremely Little Telescope. And it's already discovered 26 planets that have been confirmed and observed by other telescopes as well. So essentially it's trying to fit this gap that we haven't looked at. But here's the interesting part, the telescopes themselves. Because the telescopes used here are not giant and multi-million dollar projects like you see right here. They're not even something that looks like a typical telescope you can find in a store. There's something entirely different. Here's what a typical Cal telescope looks like. It's essentially a commercial digital camera mounted on top of a very precise rotary device and attached to a very accurate scientific instrument. So essentially it's a pretty cheap and pretty easy to construct device that can easily be built by any amateur of astronomy and actually have been built in the past. But the important part here is that over the past few years Kelt was also able to create a kind of a network of these miniature telescopes that allow us to cover pretty much the entire night skies and try to investigate different stars that we weren't really able to investigate before. And in the past few years, it discovered 26 different exoplanets, but one of these planets to date is the weirdest, most extreme and most unusual planet we've ever discovered. The planet known as Kelt 9b. The planet that has such extreme conditions and such extreme seasonal changes that even now it's kind of difficult to truly believe. And the recent investigations from TESS make this even more extreme and honestly, way way more interesting. But before we discuss what the scientists recently discovered, let's actually discuss what this planet is and how extreme it gets here. All of these planets discovered so far are hot Jupiters, but all of them are extremely hot Jupiters, to the point where it's actually in some sense closer to a typical star than it is to a typical planet. Kelt 9b, for example, on the surface here, has temperatures reaching approximately 4300 degrees Celsius. That's actually hotter than a lot of the so-called red dwarf stars we've discovered all over the place. So the temperatures here are so hot that molecules and atoms can no longer exist and start disintegrating into other components. The planet itself is roughly around three times as massive as Jupiter and takes about 36 hours to orbit the parent star that's also actually brighter and more massive than the Sun, about twice as massive. And overall, it receives about 45,000 times more energy here on the surface than our own planet Earth. But also because this planet is so close to the parent star and because it's essentially evaporating a lot of its atmosphere, it's a lot less dense than Jupiter and it's what you would call a poofy planet. It's expanded its atmosphere quite dramatically. Currently, we believe a lot of these so-called poofy planets most likely resemble something like this. Essentially, one of the sites here is extremely different from the darker side, mostly because these planets are also very likely tidally locked, they're always facing the same way toward the star. And this site here is experiencing very different atomic and molecular effects than the dark side. The atmosphere is also very, very turbulent, the winds here are extremely, extremely fast. And a lot of these planets are also kind of dark, they're much darker than any of the planets we have in the solar system. But unlike other hot Jupiters and unlike other poofy planets, Kelt 9b is also weird for one more important reason. And that reason is the orbit of the planet around the star itself. Unlike other planets, it doesn't orbit in the equatorial region, it actually orbits in the polar region of the star. 
In other words, the orbital plane of this planet is inclined this way. It's a polar orbit object. And as of right now, it's kind of difficult for us to explain what exactly caused this to be like this. And this is really important because the star itself is also really strange. The star known as Kelet 9 is one of those rare stars that spins really, really fast. So fast as a matter of fact that it most likely has a flattened shape. And a single rotation here takes about 16 hours per spin, meaning that this star has a slightly more expanded equator compared to the polar regions. This actually results in something known as gravity darkening. Because the region here on the equator has a lot more matter, and because there is more matter on the equator and a lot less of it at the poles, the gravity effects here are much lower, so the gravity effects at the poles are much higher. And according to the so-called von Zippel's theorem, because of the changes in gravity, or because of the lower gravity, the temperature at the equator is going to be much lower than the temperature at the poles. Higher gravity, more temperature. And the temperature difference here is quite dramatic. It's about 800 degrees Celsius, which creates very interesting effects. Every time the planet here approaches the poles, it will experience more heat and more energy. Every time it returns back to the equator, it experiences less heat, a lot less heat. So these unusual gravity darkening effects create extreme seasonal changes on this planet, something we can't even imagine. And all of this has recently been confirmed by the TESS telescope that was able to establish that these gravity darkening effects from the star cause the emissions from the planet itself to be very different from what we would expect it to be otherwise. In other words, this planet experiences extreme summer and extreme winter effects, and all of this only in a few hours. Remember, this only takes about 36 hours per orbit, so a single summer and a single winter here is about 9 hours in length. Which makes Kelt 9b officially the most extreme, and I guess in some sense, weirdest planet we've ever found. And obviously because the star spins so fast, it also probably has an extremely high magnetic field, and all of these magnetic effects very likely create other conditions we can't even imagine just yet. Since the planet is so close to its star, the magnetic effects here are also ridiculous. But when it comes to trying to understand what kind of effects these winters and summers have on this planet, all of this relates more to particle physics than it does to any kind of chemistry on planet Earth. The temperatures here are so high that the particles themselves start to break up, and it very likely changes the actual atomic and molecular structure of the planet every 9 hours. This is so extreme that we can't even imagine what could be possibly happening here. Also, because of the size of this planet and because of its location in the star system, the atmosphere of this planet lies outside of these so-called Roche lobes, which refers to the region around the star system or any other gravitational system where the planet itself can no longer really sustain itself, it can no longer hold the matter, and it slowly starts to fall apart. Every gravitational object in the solar system, for example, has these Roche lobes, and if something approaches a star or a planet too close, and it's unable to hold itself together, it usually turns into rings, for example, or completely falls apart. But in this case, what's most likely happening to this planet is that it's slowly losing its atmosphere. It's essentially evaporating a huge amount of its atmosphere that's going to last for a pretty long time. Current estimates suggest that up to about 70 masses of Earth are lost here every billion years. So in a few billion years, this planet might turn into a very small, tiny core, or it might actually completely disappear. Although well, chances are it's probably going to collide with a star before that happens. And obviously there are a lot of other extreme effects here as well. Like for example, some of the titanium ha that has been detected here completely disappears from this side of the planet to then be reformed on the dark side of the planet. So it's a little bit strange to even imagine that a molecule or an atom disappears completely because of the heat just to reform on the dark side. Which of course means that both sides are probably extremely different as well. Which once again makes this planet the strangest planet we've ever discovered. There's probably going to be other planets in the future, but for now, this is definitely the record holder. At a distance of 670 light years away from us, we're probably not going to be visiting this planet anytime soon, and even if we do, we're unlikely to ever land here. Nothing is going to be able to survive so close to the star itself without evaporating and essentially disintegrating completely. 
But chances are we're also going to be discovering other unusual properties of this planet and possibly other Kelt planets in some of the future studies as well. Kelt program is actually really exciting and if you do have the chance to build your own telescope similar to the Kelt system, I encourage you to do so because you might be able to even join the network or join other amateur astronomers looking for these exoplanets somewhere from planet Earth. In other words, even though this year is not going so well for us, it's a pretty exciting time to live and to look for planets out there. Our technology has reached a point where even an amateur astronomer can easily find a planet and easily identify properties that even professional astronomers can't find using very expensive telescopes. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support the channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.